Welcome again to the big match, and with World Cup preparations considerably reducing the league programme, we're able this week to delve deeper into the lower divisions. And as you'll see in the next hour, there's plenty of good football, great excitement and goals to be enjoyed there, as we've often indeed pointed out on this programme. Today, for example, you couldn't have had better value for money than the fans at Millwall got for their match against Luton Town, and that's our main game today. And from that game, we welcome Millwall's John Seisman, and as you'll see, it's a week he's long going to remember. But first, let's make a start down the Old Kent Road. Millwall against Luton Town, and first let's check on the sides, the Millwall team, with Goddard in goal, Evans, Kitchener, Hazel and Donaldson, the midfield of Brisley, Walker and Seisman, Lee, Harris and Shanahan up front, and the substitute is Barry Fairbrother. And making his first appearance in Millwall colours today is the 19-year-old Chris Harris from Bexhill, who's only been with the club for a month. And he'll be marked in this game by a 17-year-old, Graham Jones, who had one other first team game for Luton at the end of last season. Well, this is the Luton side around, Graham. Uh, Barber in goal, Price, Paul Futcher, Jones and Buckley, Chambers, West and Husband, Ron Futcher, Fuchillo and Aston with the substitute, the Scotsman Dixie Deans. Making a big impression for Millwall these days, Trevor Lee. And I fancy one or two of the managers in the stand, maybe including Ron Greenwood, will be noticing him. The referee is Tony Glasson from Salisbury. And in the crowd on that television roster and commentators from Scandinavia, the match being shown live out there. So Luton Town kick off, attacking the goal to our left, those orange shirts of theirs, very distinctive indeed with the white band, the white stripe, Millwall in their traditional blue with white shorts. Here's John Aston now for Luton. Cut out by Barry Kitchener, Ray Evans is here, just prevented that ball from going for a corner but in doing so has given it to Aston. A nice turn by him and here's Buckley. That's not a bad looking cross as well and a good header there that very nearly got in. Goddard going down well from Chambers. Good cross, good header. And in fact, it was Fuchillo whose header had to be saved. Walker, a long ball through there. It'll just get into that penalty area for Barber. This one, husband after him, it's Phil Walker. Flick there for the number six, uh, Tony Hazel. And a push there by, by Paul Price on Terry Shanahan, giving a free kick to Millwall. Dave Donaldson leaving it for Tony Hazel. striker Fuchillo a nice little back header there for Alan West a good long shot a goal out of nowhere a spectacular goal for Luton Town scored by their number eight Alan West his first goal of the season it looked almost a speculative shot and it completely took Ray Goddard by surprise into the back of the net. And a great start for Luton on a ground where traditionally they never do particularly well. And certainly the den is never the easiest ground for visiting sides. West is injured for the moment. Millwall have lost only one at home. But that was against Blackburn. Here's Ray Evans now, hoping that they can repair the damage. Phil Walker. Barry Kitchener right in there, he scored! Well, I blow, that's two goals in the back of the minute, with only three and a half minutes gone. Well, the last thing in the world that Luton could have expected was for Barry Kitchener to have been one left unmarked on that far side, and he scored plenty with his head in the past, but this time a really rifling drive makes it 1-1. But it's a free kick for Millwall. Curled in nicely there. Seisman couldn't quite touch on it. Ray Evans would hope to get something just wide. Well, I don't 
think they expected him to pop up there on the left-hand side, but that's where he was. And he hit it well. And Keith Barber just got it over. And Hazel on his way again for Millwall. Well played. Finding Lee. Attacking Buckley. Gone past him. Got it back well. And Bisley! So Terry Bisley has scored again. But a goal made without any question at all by Trevor Lee. He attacked the full back. He got to the byline with a lot of skill. Screwed it back well. And Terry Brisley was there to put Millwall into the lead. Phil Walker. A lazy cross of his again. Trevor Lee with a header. Ray Evans. Oh! Save. He has really pissed to those shots in this uh, for the Tottenham fullback. And as it came to him this time, it wasn't that easy to control, but he hit it beautifully and forced a very good save indeed out of Keith Barber. This time Shanahan and Donaldson. Shanahan 11. Dave Donaldson 3. And Donaldson will curl this in with the right foot. A little too high for Lee. Aston away to West. Good ball there. Played first time to Husband, who was just on side. And Lukna scrum two, four, five men forward. Paul Fuchs is one of them. Here's Fuchillo brought down. That's got to be a penalty. And it is. Pointing to the spot. No argument. But that was a beautiful move. And they sprung men forward. There were five of them springing into that uh, Millwall penalty area. It came through to Fuchillo. Brought down, penalty. Well, here's the chance then for moving down to get an equaliser. Steve Buckley is the man, a defender, given that responsibility to beat Ray Goddard. Buckley now with the penalty. 2-2. Oh. Well, there's no doubt in your mind now as to the way that Steve Buckley feels the penalty should be taken. Hit with all the power in the world, Ray Goddard couldn't even have seen it. Good job there, though, by West. Aston is up, but all he's managed to do is give it away again. Here's Ray Evans. It's a good spell, this for Millwall, and a very good break by Donaldson. Beautifully timed, Harris waiting in the middle, chipped a little too high for him. of that was and that was the fullback Dave Donaldson who made a brilliant run Harris went roaring into the box so too did Walker the cross came floating in and Walker will be annoyed with himself for not putting that one away quarter of an hour left score still at 2-2 but now there was a handball while the crowd was shouting the linesman flagged the referee whistled and Millwall get a free kick in a very promising position indeed. Just to the right of centre, 20 yards out from goal. So what will that crowd behind that goal see now? They're going to have a beautiful view of something. And they'll, most of them, be hoping it's a Millwall goal. Brisley and Walker are right up there. But it's surely they're going to let Ray... No, no, Ray Evans has gone way up to the right there. I thought he might be the one having a go at it, but it's... Crossbar thought the ball had gone over the line and nobody more surprised than Keith Barber when he found that he could pick it up. A tremendous shot by Walker, rattling that Luton crossbar. It didn't cross the line, said the referee, and Barber was grateful to grab it. Harris in there, Seisman in there, so too is Shanahan and Walker, Lee on the far side, and even Donaldson too. Hazel with a long, long cross. Trevor Lee on the far side. Barry Kitchener tried to get in. Harris with the header. Walker crossed it in. It's there. Walker must take the credit. Goal given. Well, it was finally forced over the line. There was a tremendous...
a scramble in that Luton goal. And it was Walker who got the touch that really counted. And it uh, stuck on the line, just over the line before Shanahan got the touch. That was my view. Lee. Donaldson has linked up as well. Grizzly. That should be Barbers, and it is. Well, they pushed a few forward. If Luton could have broken quickly, that might have been interesting, but uh, they couldn't. And it comes to Phil Walker. Played on again there. For Seisman! Yes! Against his own club! Right into the time, and John Seisman, the man who got married last Saturday, or last Sunday, rather, came back from a honeymoon to play, has scored in injury time against his own club. And what a good goal it was, too, to make a final score line, which is surely what it will be now. Well into injury time, Millwall 4, Luton 2. Well, there was a lot to cheer at Millwall yesterday, John, wasn't there? Yes. It was uh, an exciting game. There's some great football and a great result. Yes. Great end product, and I was especially pleased to score against my old club. Of course. But I gather there was a great argument in the dressing room as to who scored the third goal for Millwall, because uh, I thought Phil Walker scored it, but I gather Terry Shanahan put in a fairly strong bid for it, didn't he? Well, Phil was claiming it, and both Terry as well, but yeah. I think it must go to yeah. Phil Walker. Let's settle that argument once and for all. I'm sure they're watching now, and if they're not, you can tell them tomorrow when you go in for training. Long cross coming. What a tremendous jump by Trevor Lee on the far side. He really does get up well, doesn't he, in those situations? He does. Chris Harris gets a good header in. And look, does it cross the line from Phil Walker? The hole of the ball, yes. yes just over that just line about. before Terry Shanahan goes in there. And then, of course, your moment, uh, right at the end. Tell us how this one came, your goal in, in injury time now. I remember receiving the ball from... It's a throw out, in fact, isn't it, from uh, Keith Barber here, the Luton goalkeeper. And they rather give it away, don't they? Yeah. Now, what happens here? Terry Brizzy plays one to uh, Terry Shannon. Then Phil Walker just pushes it through and catches on my right, pushes him at the left. Especially pleased to see that one going. Came back well a couple of times, Millwall, and, and you get the impression they're a club going places. Well, I think so. We've got a good day board of directors and we've got a great manager in Gordon Diego and there's a good atmosphere overall in the club I think it could be one of the top uh, London clubs in the future mm. I mean promotion is obviously out this year although earlier today you were saying well I don't know we might even do that well there's no outstanding team really that we've met so far in the league I think if we can just get our away form together and pick up a few points, then I think we're on our way. Yes. But that, that's the problem there, isn't it? I don't know why. You just can't do a thing away from home. No, we don't seem to play with the same conviction away from home as we do at the Den. But I think if we can put that right, then we're well on our way. Would that be a need for a tactical change, do you think, uh, John? Well, or think is it a change of characters needed? I think it's more of a tactical change, really. We're just going to have to pull an extra man into the midfield and keep that tight, and then we'll go from there. I know when you came in earlier today, you were bubbling about the prospect of playing for Millwall. It's a good club to play for. Oh, it's a great club. I've, uh, ever since I came to the club, it's just over six months ago, things have gone ever so well for me personally. And within the club, it's really been enjoyable to be there. Mm. And I think, as I say, they are going to go places. Mm.